everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Live from the Lair. All right, uh, let's see. Last time we left off, I finished the Q course, and I started off my career in Special Forces. But uh, like I said earlier, I had a chance to convert my active duty contract over to reserve because the Gulf War had just ended and there was a huge cutback and they were just throwing people out of the army hand, hand over fist, which was good for me, I guess, because, uh, you know, I kind of wanted to go to college and get my degree, uh, mainly because they told me that uh, college isn't for everyone because they thought I was some kind of idiot back in high school, which uh, <laughs> I was and I wasn't. Uh, but that's, that's not here nor there. Now, before I get into this next portion, I just want to talk about the rank of Sergeant Major in the United States Army. Now, up until that point, I had very limited access to Sergeant Majors. Um, you know, I talked to the 9th Infantry Sergeant Major like maybe half a dozen times, and half of those, you know, meetings were, were neutral, the other half were fucking negative. You know, he had, you know, I think he had like four or five tours in Vietnam. Uh, he was originally from that country before the Vietnam conflict started. He was half cyborg because he had a plastic face and a, I think a steel plate in his head, or maybe it was silver, I don't remember. He was fucking crazy. He's probably dead now. He smoked like two packs of cigarettes a day, so I'm sure he's dead. Okay, not, you know. Yeah, I think we're better off without that guy because he was kind of creepy. Um, let's see. Uh, I had a couple interactions with Sergeant Major Leon Guerrero from 2nd Ranger Battalion. Great guy. You know, shook your hand, looked you in the face. He told you exactly how it was. Um, didn't lie to anybody. Didn't play political bullshit with, with the soldiers. You know, uh, if he asked you a question, it was because he legitimately wanted to know what the fuck was going on. And if it was fucked up, he would find out why and try to fix it, which is basically what any NCO was supposed to do. That is like the bottom of the barrel task any Sergeant Werther, you know, weight is supposed to do is find out problems and fix them. And then it, and then that just gets you know, bigger and bigger as you go up like squad leader and platoon sergeant, first sergeant, and then sergeant major and command sergeant major is you ask those questions to more soldiers and the problems get bigger. Okay, and uh, I believe that sergeant major academy back then really, well, I think it was like 90 days or 120 days long. It wasn't, you know, compared to what they do now, which is the equivalent of like a master's degree. It's really, it wasn't a big deal. And you know, most of the stuff that you learn that you need to be a good sergeant major, you learn as, as an enlisted. And, um, you know, from my experience, you know, all of the schooling and bullshit that they, they give these NCOs to become sergeant majors today has basically ruined it. Because, uh, you know, I can remember my last 10 years on active duty when I would go talk to many of the sergeant majors, it was like talking to another fucking officer. You know, they'd tell you what you want to hear. You could tell they didn't give a fuck what was going on with you. It yeah, really, and it wasn't a big problem. They didn't really go out of their way to unfuck it. And, you know, the care factor was no longer at like a nine or a 10 where the old Sergeant Majors were supposed to be. It was hovering somewhere between like a two and a four, you know, which is unacceptable. Now, I'm not saying that of all the Sergeant Majors today, because I have run into a few, uh, you know, of the recent ones. Uh, who are worth a damn. Most of them came from former combat MOSs. Okay, very rarely have I come across a sergeant major from a non-combat MOS who was worth their weight in, in any kind of increment. You know, either shit, salt, whatever, gold. Uh, they usually weren't. Now, this is where the, the, this part of the story comes into it. Because I remember I am processed into my u new unit which was in Selfridge Air National Guard. Uh, I think it was Charlie Company, 12th Group, uh, and uh, you know, 12th Group Special Forces. And it was, it was fucking night and day. And I remember, like, I first came in there, and the Sergeant Major was there, his name was Sergeant Major Smith, skinny guy, 
you know, mean as shit, but he was fair, you know. And, uh, you know, he was a Marine from Vietnam. I saw pictures of him and stuff. And, and, and they all start off, the, you know, the same. They start off the same as me, just some skinny dude behind a weapon. And they just said, hey, if it's not the same uniform as you and it's carrying this gun, it dies. If it's shooting at you, it dies. If we're taking indirect fire and you think they're spotting, they die. I mean, it's it's pretty simple, you know. So he started off, you know, yeah, granted he was Marine. I love the Marines, but, you know, they are what they are. But <laughs> he was fucking hilarious. And I remember, like, I am processed in with, and I, and, and in with them, and, uh, you know, I was fucking with them. Because he's like, he told me I had to go to selection. I told him I didn't. We went back and forth like four or five times. I saw he was getting pissed off. And I pulled out the little postcard you get when you finish uh, SFAS and you're selected. And I threw it on the desk and I said, ah, ha, ha, too bad. Because I already did it. So, you know, I, I guess we got off on a good foot. But, uh, you know, he, he basically served as the model of the NCO that I was going to be. Because he was fucking hilarious. You know, granted, some of the shit he did was fucking cruel. <laughs> but looking back on it, it was fucking hilarious. Um, like, I, I, and another thing is, like, the special forces and the regular army, it's, it's so fucking different. It's like, the regular army is kind of like grade school, and, like, the special forces is like college. You're a child in one and you're fucking treated like an adult in the other. Like minimum super supervision, they just tell you what they want. This is what I want, and this is what I want it by. If you can't do it, let me know, boom, go. You know, and uh, you know, I had a team leader, and they, they were great NCOs too. In fact, you know, all the guys there, they're all good guys. You know, some of them were a little long in the tooth, and they're a little slow on the uptake, but you know, now that I'm long in the tooth, I understand it, and uh, I don't begrudge those guys anything a couple of them have passed on god rest their souls but i remember you know doing some of the training there and having the sergeant major you know because he knew i was a sniper you know from second bat and he's like okay uh so uh we're gonna be uh, doing range operations in a couple months and uh, i just want to know what your ammo requirements would be since you're going to be firing the majority of the sniper systems now i had never ever in my entire life have anybody ever walk up to me and go, hey, Pop, how much ammo do you need? They always kind of said, this is the number you have, make it fucking work. I, I'd, never, I'd never fucking seen that before. So I'm kind of like, well, what can I have? And he's like, well, since we pretty much have an unlimited budget, what do you need? And I'm like, well, I want to fire the M21 and the M24, and I would like to have for myself, Two to three thousand uh, rounds per weapons platform. Not a problem. Writes it down. Would you want to fire the M16 too? Of course. How many rounds do you need for that? I'm like, oh, 1600. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get that ammo request. He didn't even bat an eyelash. Like, okay. He just turns and walks off. Not a problem. And uh, not only did I go fucking absolute hog wild with those weapons systems. But I went crazy with the saw, the 60, the 50, and the Mark 19. And that was like all of the guys there. Just we went crazy on that shit. It, it was like the, it was kind of like the Q course. They kind of rolled up in this big fucking truck of ammo, and we went fucking hog wild. <laughs> and I, I, it was beyond me, but it was great. You know, we went to ranges in other states that had steel targets all the way out to like you know 1,500 meters. You know, we did Tire House, you know, CQB, throwing live hand grenades, you know, firing off Claymore mines that are like maybe, you know, five yards away from us from inside a foxhole, blowing open doors, flipping over cars, you know, d you know, actually walking out in, onto impact areas and, you know, flipping over fucking tanks, mixing up our own fucking shit. I mean, it, it was it was fucking great. I absolutely loved it. But what I didn't love was this. I jumped into Panama. All right, I got wounded. They almost killed me in the drop zone, run over by an enemy vehicle. The jump was fucking horrible. The rigged up flight was fucking horrible. You know, six, seven hours rigged up. I had to piss myself, you know, vomit. 
you know, the, the whole thing, it, it just sucked, okay? So it scarred me. And to this day, I, I still fucking hate jumping. Fucking hate it, okay? I, I mean, I would never jump for fun. I, I did it because it was, you know, came with the job. And the reason I stayed in the special operations as long as I did, like 22 plus years, is because I love the work, I love the soldiers you serve with, and I love the fucking mission. And the jumping portion, yeah, I hated it, and it scared the absolute shit out of me. But br there is no bravery without having to overcome fear. And since I, the, my love of the community was greater than my hate of jumping, so I just kind of suck, suck it up. But I remember I would do my, min my, my one jump, and Star Major Smith knew that I fucking hated jumping. Because, you know, he heard the, the, the me getting wounded story, the whole fucking deal. So every time we would jump, afterwards, he like, so, Pop. You still hate jumping? Roger that, Sergeant Major. All right, grab another shoot. And there were some times where we do elevators where literally you get in a helicopter, they take you up to 1,500, 1,200 feet, you jump out and you land. You bring your shoot in, he would ask me again, you still hate jumping? Yes, Sergeant Major. All right, grab a shoot. Sometimes I would do five or six of those in a fucking day. Like in a three hour period, six fucking jumps. But I never lied, I never lied to him, you know? Because if you ever want your sergeant major in your corner, do you, never, ever lie to them. Because they will never fucking back you after that. You will be fucking mud. So I never did. No matter all the crazy fucking horse shit I did or didn't do or whatever I was accused of, he would come up and be like, Pop, did you bang those bitches last night? Yes. <laughs> and he would just laugh. All right, all right. Hey, Pop. Did you fucking blow that tank up and flip it over? Was that our idea? Yes. <laughs> I remember there was a couple of times you this. Well, I love you, Pop. You never lied to me. Never. I like that. And he would fucking just do his fucking deal. You know, and uh, he would fuck with me all the time, you know. Because <laughs> he was an Indiana State Trooper and shit. And uh, <laughs> yeah. It was fucking hilarious, but what are you going to fucking do? I remember uh, on this one training mission, we were doing winter survival, and uh, I, was, I was teamed up with this one other guy. Now, I had done winter survival, you know, on active duty, and uh, I sucked at cross-country skiing. I, I, I hate skiing in all of its shapes and forms. Uh, and all of the shit I did, you know, in active duty, we used snowshoes, okay? So we didn't really do the, the cross-country skiing. So, you know, I'm trying to fuck with the skiing. I'm, I'm absolute shit. Everyone's waiting on me and, and my battle bunny. You know, he can ski, I can. I'm just fucking up by the numbers. And I could tell Sergeant Major was getting a little aggravated. We'd gone over the time hack by like an hour. He just walks up, fucking throws the map down. He goes, hey... There's a, there's a grid on there. You, this is where you need to be, you know, in two days time. Uh, if you don't make it, then uh, make it out to one of the major roads and uh, we'll come find you. Um, if you don't make it to the halfway point, you know how to make a, uh, you know, a, a winter uh, survival emergency shelter, have at it. And they just fucking leave me and my, my, my bud. <laughs> he was mad as fuck too. And it took me, you know, about a half a day to get up to speed in the cross country skiing. And I still wasn't that good, but, you know, I could at least was fast enough that I was making the time hacks. And we did make it to the halfway point where, you know, we had shelter and, you know, heated stove and everything. Even though we did, we did show up like three hours late, but, you know, it is, it is what it is. We still got a good night's sleep and took off the next day and, and made all our time hacks after that. <laughs> But, you know, Charlie don't surf and Pop don't fucking ski. I, I, I just, I have never liked it. I fucking hate it. And it's not anything that I, I ever want to do fucking for fun. Let's see, what are some other ones? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> um, I remember we did a fucking class, or actually it was a range, had a class attached to it on Soviet weapons, right? So we had the Dishka, the, you know, the RPK, the AK, yeah, the SVD sniper system, which I love and I hate, because if you don't fucking get your eye right on, right there, and you don't get it in your shoulder correctly, it'll bounce back so fucking hard, it'll cut your fucking eye, give you like one to four stitches. 
Uh, I did get scope bit, but I never had to get stitches because, you know, it only happened one fucking time and I learned my lesson. And then uh, we fired off an ass load of RPGs, you know. Um, I'm trying to remember what their production rate. So we had a bunch from the 60s and the 80s, but none of them that were any earlier than that. Um, I think the first generation RPGs were too um, too touchy and, and and they had a habit of blowing up in the tube and killing the launcher and, the, and everyone around them. So they didn't really like fucking with those. I, I don't think I, I think we fired like two or three of those in the Q course and I never saw them again. Uh, and you know, the, the RPG missile by itself is incredibly fucking dangerous uh, because it doesn't have like a minimum arming distance like a lot of uh, the missiles have uh, in, the ar in the American arsenal. There's actually a cap on the end that you unscrew and then once you take that cap off, if you hit the end, it's going to go off. Now, I don't know if the newer missiles actually have some type of better safety system built into them. I've been out of the system for a while, so I don't know. But, yeah, we fired off, I don't know. I, I know I fired easily that day somewhere between uh, 60 and 80 missiles, which is a lot. Because considering that when you fire that thing, it's the equivalent of something blowing up by the side of your fucking head with enough force that it fires, you know, a four to five pound projectile up to, uh, you know, 1500 meters away. I mean, that's a lot of fucking force, man. But yeah, that was good times. And, uh, you know, I remember we put up some ammo crates behind us and fucking fired off the missiles and watched the ammo crates get turned to fucking you know basically toothpicks it was fucking great glorious and i'm glad i did it but anyway we'll continue on with some more sto uh, some more stories i have uh i have a pr pretty good counter drug mission that we did off the coast of california that involved the dea and uh and the coast guard and actually my entire unit was mobilized for this one it wasn't uh, cherry picking you know onesie twosies like the rest of them were but uh, we'll cover that when uh, we come into it here. Um, and I'm also going to start moving over, um, going to mix these up a little bit because uh, I've been neglecting a lot of real world stuff. So some of these live from the layers, I'm actually going to, you know, start talking about shit that's going on in the news, in my opinion, or, you know, relevant stuff like that. I'm going to still continue the army stories, but, you know, we're going to, you know, carry them on into the future. Because at the pace we're going, I'll pretty much be done with all the Army stories in about six months to a year. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I want to burn through them that quick and make them, you know, plus, you know, I, it gives me more time to, you know, think of, to think of the details and fill them in better so I'm not just, you know, going over them, you know, in a generic way. Because it makes the story better. But anyway, gentlemen, you guys have a good evening and I'll talk to you later.